This reptile pattern box contains a wire recorder from the Danish company Ecolo Radio. And they call this the Echo Recorder. We can see that it's adapted to the Swedish market. Here we have a Swedish warning label telling you that the power should be turned off before removing the front plates and that you should use an S-marked safety transformer when connecting it to the mains electricity. Here we have the transformer for this unit. And here we have some further information. This is a Type D. It's 60 watts. It's supposed to be supplied with 110 volts and 50 cycles. I could not find a production year on this. It seems to have been produced from the mid to late 40s. And the only reliable evidence I found to back up this time period was this ad poster. Which is from 1950. So the plan is to restore it. As it is now I do not want to run it very long because it probably contains a lot of old deteriorated capacitors that could be putting a lot of strain and possibly damage other components. So we will start by replacing deteriorated capacitors. But first let's take a look at the features. This is where you place the wire spool. This is the record and playback head. And here we have the wire collector spool. Here you toggle between playback and reverse. Here you have the time counter, here you have the Swedish safety approval sticker, here you have the signal indicator. Here is an output for external speakers, here is the line input, and here you can toggle between the different modes of this device. This is for playback, this is for microphone recording, this is for line recording, and this is to use the device as a microphone amplifier. Here we have the volume, here you toggle between external speaker or internal, here is the microphone input, and here you adjust the color of the sound. Let's open it up. So it contained a cutout of Sixth and Erling a Swedish conductor and pianist. It looks so clean and untouched. It almost seems like a shame to tamper with it now. It's like looking back in time. The white powder on the speaker is zinc hydroxide, also known as white rust. You can get most of it off with a soft brush, but do it outside, and preferably with some kind of face mask, because it's not very nice to inhale. Look at the microphone input. It's shielded with a spring down to the ground plane. I don't think I've ever seen this before. So this can move around a bit while still being an unbroken shield. Now let's look at what tubes were used. A 6x4, that is a rectifier tube used in the power supply. A 6AQ5, that is a pentode used for the power amplifier. An ECC91 that is a double triode, probably used for the single amplification. 
a 6AT6, a double diode triode, probably used for signal amplification as well. And here we have an EM5 Magic Eye Tube used to monitor the signal level. Now, as you saw, all of the tubes except for one had this paper strip with numbers 10, 66, 10 on them. So I'm guessing that is some kind of batch or date information. And given that all of them, except one, had the same numbers on them, that would indicate that all of them, except the ECC91, are the original tubes mounted in this unit. It's really nicely laid out, and we see they've been really meticulous with the shielding of the signal path. Here we even have a separate metal plate for shielding these signals. Most of the signal wires has this grounded foil wrapped around them. And they're grounded in a lot of places, like here, and they're grounded to each other, here and here. We can also see they've been real thorough securing all these nuts with some thread locker. You can see there's a lot of capacitors with 2000 volt rating. So the plan is to replace all the electrolytic capacitors, and these wax capacitors will also need to be replaced. When it comes to the resistors, they might be drifting a bit in value. So the idea is to measure them and see if they match the nominal value. And if they've drifted too much in value, they have to be replaced. Otherwise, they can stay. I've written down all the capacitors that needs to be replaced. And I've also measured the resistors. And the only ones that deviate a lot are these 1K resistors, which need to be replaced as well. Let's take a look at these 50 kilo ohm resistors labeled always. And there's one on the other side. These resistors have kept within 1% of their nominal value for 70 years. That's pretty impressive. 